In this video, I'm going to take a look at cycloalkanes, sometimes known as cyclic alkanes. But before I do, let's just remind ourselves the key points to regular alkanes. So I've made a model of hexane to illustrate the key points about the alkanes. So the first thing to remind ourselves is alkanes are what we call hydrocarbons because they contain carbon and hydrogen. Only alkanes are saturated and that's because the carbons are connected by C-C single bonds. And they have the general formula CnH2n plus 2. So in the case of hexane where n equals 6, we would have 2 6s, 12 plus 2, 14 hydrogens. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this hexane molecule and I'm going to turn it into cyclohexane. So all a cyclo molecule is, is a ring and not a chain. So I'm going to take off this bond here because effectively I want to curl this round and join these carbons together. So I'm going to have to lose this hydrogen here and there it is. I've made cyclohexane now. So what we'll do now is we'll just run through these four key points that we started with just to see if that's the same for this cyclohexane molecule that we've got on the board now. So is it a hydrocarbon? Well, does it contain carbon and hydrogen only? Yes. So it's a hydrocarbon. Is it saturated? Well, have we got carbon-carbon single bonds? Yes, we have. So it's still saturated. Before we look at the general formula for the cyclic alkane, let's work out the molecular formula for cyclohexane. So we've got six carbons and two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 hydrogens. So we've got a different molecular formula. Have we got a different general formula? Well, yes, we have because the ratio between carbons and hydrogens is now 1 to 2. So we've got the same general formula as the alkene homologous series. So just to summarize, cyclic alkanes are hydrocarbons, they are saturated, they've got a different general formula to regular alkanes, CnH2n, and an example is cyclohexane, which is C6H12. So how do we represent cyclic alkanes? Well, this would be a displayed formula. You could also do something like this. Could have CH2, 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 and so on in that hexagonal ring. Chemists tend to use skeletal formulae for cyclic alkanes, much easier to draw. So if you remember every sort of corner or point on the hexagon is a carbon. So if we think about how many bonds can carbon make, it can make four bonds. So this carbon here is singly bonded to that carbon and that carbon. So there's two bonds gone. So we can put two hydrogens on each corner, on each carbon. In terms of the bond angles around the carbons, we've still got four pairs of electrons, bonding pairs, all repelling each other equally and so the bond angle is still 109.5 degrees. So we've still got that tetrahedral arrangement around these carbons. If we look at something like cyclopropane now, so that's a, a ring structure of three carbons, so there's the skeletal formula for you as well, the bond angle actually gets much smaller. So what I've done is I've, I've cut the uh, cyclohexane molecule in half. So I've got the three carbons I need and the six hydrogens I need to make cyclopropane. And I'm really struggling with the model kit to get the... See, it's just popped open there. So this is a good demonstration of these bonds are actually too close together. I can't actually get it to close. And so something like this is really reactive. There, I've managed to do it. So that's a really reactive molecule because these bonds are too close together. They don't like being that close. And so they're repelling each other naturally 
and the molecule wants to sort of spring open and it makes it very reactive as a result. So we've seen cyclopropane, we've seen cyclohexane, so let's just look at a couple more. We've got the square here, so that's obviously four carbons in um, a cyclic arrangement, two hydrogens on each corner, so this is cyclobutane, so that would be C4H8, and we've got cyclopentane here. So you can see I've just put some branches onto the cyclobutane and cyclopentane. So if you want to have a go at naming these two now, and then I'll go through the answers. So the first one, we've got cyclobutane, but we've got methyl groups, two methyl groups on carbon, on the same carbon if you like. So we'll call this carbon one. So this is called 1,1-dimethyl cyclobutane. So the one at the bottom, we've got essentially cyclopentane, but we've got two different alkyl branches. So we've got a methyl branch here, and we've got an ethyl branch. There's two carbons in this branch, ethyl branch here. So remember the alphabet rule means that we have to name the ethyl branch first, because it begins with E. So we'll call this carbon number one, which makes this carbon number, well, let's go around this way. We get one, two, three, four. Going this way, we get one, two, three. We've got to go with the lowest number, so it's a methyl at carbon number three. So what would we call this? It would be one ethyl, 3-methyl cyclopentane. 